Hi and welcome to the small group video for this week. We are into uh, week four of our sermon series on looking at what does discipleship look like. Um, and we're kind of in this series trying to get us a reframe of um, what does it look like to follow Jesus, but what does it what does it look like to do that in in a deep way? Um, uh, we talked about rearranging our life around Jesus. And so now we're, we're kind of trying to set ourselves up so that we can be wooed with the image of what it looks like to follow Jesus. So we want to have a picture here of how good it is that we get excited about doing so. And at the same time, we're wanting to throw out some tools that will help us all uh, in our journey following Jesus. So uh, um, uh, this week, uh, Adrian unpacked us looking at um, obedience. Um, it, it looks like um, uh, following Jesus and being a disciple of Jesus is someone who obeys Jesus. Um, this is really clear from Matthew chapter 28 in the Great Commission. Um, uh, in verses 16 to 20, Jesus gathers his disciples together and he commissions them to go and make disciples of all nations. And when he does so, he says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and then this is the key bit here, teaching them to obey what I have commanded. And this is really key, is that to be a disciple means someone obeys what Jesus has commanded. It lives the life of Jesus. It's a life of righteousness, but it's a life of flourishing. It's, um, it's stepping into the things that he invites us to. Um, but it's doing them, it's trusting him. Um, Adrian talked about that, about the, the way that we trust him, the way that we put ourselves as less than Jesus um, gives us a chance then to go, yeah, of course what you're saying is true. In our passage that you'll have read and had a little chat about already in, uh, in the small group today, um, there's two sort of sections to that. The first section has some actually really strong language and it describes that if you, if you don't obey what Jesus does, that Jesus tells us to, then you actually end up being an evil doer. I don't know if you've thought about that word, but um, there's an invitation to follow Jesus and you become a good doer, right? But the alternative to being a good doer is an evil doer. And for all of us, we slip into this category all the time when we don't obey what Jesus has told us to in, in whatever realm. But he's saying it's so significant that you, you end up being an evildoer. And, you, and we get that, it flows on to this beautiful image that we all know well and probably have sung, remember a song in Sunday school singing about it. But you've got the wise builder who builds his life upon the rock and the foolish builder who builds his house upon the sand. Um, but when the rain comes, this one falls apart. Um, the storms of life come, this one stays firm. And the, the, the difference between a life that is solid that is peaceful, that is, um, that is not in fear of falling apart, and a life that literally is going to crumble. The difference between these two images is obedience. It's listening to what Jesus says and then doing it. Adrian gave us a couple of beautiful images. The first one um, I want to mention is the, when he described the, the story of um, uh, the founder of his performing arts school that Adrian went to, and the founder how... Uh, when he was obedient to God's call, God ended up providing so many resources to him. What Adrian was saying there is that, that the life of obedience actually aligns with God's blessing, that you get God's blessing and he comes and meets you in that when you obey him, that he, he arrives with that. And then Adrian told that other little story about when uh, he got up in the middle of the night to um, watch the movie that he wasn't allowed to watch. And that that act of disobedience caused difficulty in Adrian and he had to give up on it because it was so difficult for him to do wrong. It feels yuck when we disobey. So it's not just that it's, it, it is the words of Jesus, but actually from our experience, we can see that there's blessing when we obey him and there's destruction and difficulty and pain when we don't. Adrian talked a lot on Sunday about listening to God and, and then obeying what he says. And that may happen in parts of your life where you're called to do something or where you, perhaps you're called to go somewhere else or to do something else. In those places, we need to listen to God. It's not about what I want to do. Um, it's about aligning to what God wants us to do. That's the place of blessing. That's the place of firm foundation. It's God's call that we need to follow. But there's a second piece here that I want to highlight, which is what Jesus was really talking about in Matthew 28. 
and when he commissions his disciples, he's not just talking about whether you'll obey him to go be a dance teacher or whether you'll obey him to go and be a bin man or a, um, a, a pastor or a missionary, whatever it is. That's a really important thing to be obedient to. But what Jesus is talking about in Matthew 28 is just the everyday things that Jesus tells us to do. So the life of forgiving one another, the life of blessing people who persecute you, the life of watching your language or what you think about and how you care for others, the life of love and joy and peace and patience with one another, compassion for the last, least and the lost. These are things that Jesus taught and we have an invitation to obey him or not. When we obey him, you get the life of flourishing and of a solid life that's built on rock. But for many of us, we resist some of those things that he teaches us. And we need to pay attention to that too. Where do I not obey? Where do I resist? I hope that you spend some time thinking about that too, um, because we all do that to some extent. And it'd be great if we let that go. Discipleship looks like this. It looks like a life of flourishing and of obedience and of peace, even in the midst of storm. Let me pray. Jesus, I thank you so much that you teach us about life. You speak to us and offer us life in abundance and fullness and based upon you as our firm foundation. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be wooed by that life, that our resistance is to being told what to do, our resistance is to being laying down our lives and paying the cost, that, that they would subside. I pray, Holy Spirit, you'd fill each of the rooms that we're meeting in now that this would be a transforming time and we would be excited to obey you in all that you have taught us. In Jesus' name, amen.